Hi, I'm Steven Wervis, and today I'm going to talk about why I switched from FreeCAD to OpenSCAD. Uh, I used started off in 3D modeling, actually with Google SketchUp, quite a long time ago. And I don't think you can even maybe use Google SketchUp or download it. Maybe it's still out there someplace as an old version. But that was that was okay. Definitely not the most powerful in the world. I've briefly used AutoCAD once on a educational computer and definitely complex and I'm sure if you have the license for that and you use it every day uh, that's a, a good tool but I'm um, just talking about for hobby use here I do 3D printing uh, and so you know what's what works for me uh, I have used uh, from SketchUp I went to OpenCAD and uh, it was okay I enjoyed it but the thing I found with it that frustrated me the most is I would be editing the layers and changing a design like maybe making a box I remember one time I was making a case for a Raspberry Pi and you kinda of get the sides done, you get the bottom in, you start putting the holes in and then you have to change a dimension and so then I go back and change that in another layer and it gets corrupted and I just repeatedly found it again and again and then I googled it some and Everyone's like, oh yeah, this happens all the time. And I'm like, what? Uh, so that was where I started looking for something different. And I came across OpenSCAD. And I have been using it ever since. It looks really simple. It doesn't look that impressive of a tool, but it actually is quite powerful. The reason is, it's all code. Uh, and so that has been a huge benefit to me because of the, the value that that concept brings in. It's not good for everything. I've heard some people say maybe it's not as good for artistic designs. Most of the time I'm 3D printing something, so it's basic shapes. Uh, so that has worked quite well for me uh, for most of the projects that I have gotten into. But one of the aspects, though, so the UI, like I said, is somewhat simple here. Uh, you can grab shapes, move them around, whatnot. But there's also a learning curve to the other tools, such as FreeCAD, or if you got into uh, a, a different uh, modeling tool, there's uh, that. UI curve that you have to get through. The neat thing with OpenSCAD is it's a code, so that still has its own learning curve, but at least if you have a basic concept of uh, how coding works, you can uh, start to survive, and then from there is just basic geometry. So supposing you don't know anything at all, the neat thing is now you can use AI. So I can bring up perplexity here, and in OpenSCAD, how can I make a box, right? So very simple, I don't know what I'm asking for. It's actually called a cube, but I don't know that yet. So it went ahead, it gave me a width, height, okay. And it's gonna use hull. This is not the way I would do this. So AI is not always the best, but it, it, it did give me something. that will be fun to run to see if it uh, kind of looks okay. So what does it do here? It makes a module, it does, uh, some translates on it as definitely the hard way around. Uh, so there is a cheat sheet. Here's the cheat sheet. And this is pretty good. I, I use this a lot. So there's 2D shapes, 3D shapes. Uh, the hull is an interesting uh, function. It basically, whatever points or objects within the shape it like wraps, if you imagine shrink wrap, you put it around the shape and then you, you know, hair dryer and shrink it up. That's what Hall gives you, which is kind of neat. It, it's, a, it's a cool tool, but it's not a good, uh, good out of the box way. Uh, so that failed, but uh, if you know it was a cube, uh, you could then do cube. Uh, so supposing we're asking it like that, uh, could you use cube to Make, could you give me a cube example? Could you give a cube example? Oh, okay. It got a little better now. <laughs> AI is not always the smartest. Uh, anyways, so there we have a width and length and height. And so that's pretty cool. And it already threw it in variables. So that that's not too bad. All right, let's put it in. So pop that in. And we instantly have a cube of some random shape. I'm going to drop out the comments here. Cube, that's fine, whatever. And 
uh, you don't have to use the variables. I could just as easily do another one. Oops, I do here. I could just as easily have a different one done. I'm gonna comment this out so that's not there. You could uh, you could type in say one 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 and it pops up. And I like this center equals true. It helps you with uh, with positioning sometimes. At least the the technique that I use. just found out that my equal key is bound to my screen recorder. All right. <laughs> uh, so if, if we had center equals true, it would bounce it to the center there, uh, which is, is a neat a neat uh, way of doing it. But we'll just ignore that for now. And go ahead and save the cube. And it made a really tiny cube, which is uh, basically what I asked it for, though. And you can zoom in and see that. Uh, so you've got functions to move it. If you look at the cheat sheet, it's got different shapes in 2D. You can make text. You can extrude it. So similar concepts back, I remember, especially with uh, SketchUp, you would make a shape and then you like drag it someplace and extrude it out on a face. So the same same concept you can do here with the 2D shapes, uh, how you utilize them typically. You can also use them for cutting. Uh, you just need to know the lingo, which, you know, cutting is difference. Uh, combining something is union. Union is implied. Uh, but there's cases where you need to define it uh, so it can vary. The cheat sheet's super good. There is a wiki, too, an open sky wiki that's really nice. Uh, but I do find that I use the AI most of the time, and I think it's because it works well for me because I normally know what I want out of it, and it's just that I don't exactly remember how to do that. Uh, the other day I was trying to use a function as a module, I forgot which one was which, and I was like, hey, why isn't this working? And it's like, oh, well, you need to use module, not function. Uh, so it was very intelligent in that case and helped out. Uh, so that's one of the things I like about this is it's a little more practical to ask the AI questions intelligently and get back a good answer. I have had it try to design uh, models before, and they were not good at all. So I think there's a ways that AI has to go for... Uh, full coding. But anyways, it's super good for uh, just asking the general questions if you get stuck on something. So the layer corruption issue doesn't happen here. Uh, you can come through, change the code, whatever. You hit save, it's done. And then you can uh, hit F6 to render. It renders it. And then you can hit STL. And instantly you have an STL that you could save someplace. And so that's uh, super easy, super fast. Uh, if you and you can build up functions. I was talking about that a moment ago. You can make modules or functions. Uh, the, the functions return something. The modules uh, basically output it. Shape is the, the concept. They do something. Uh, and you can make libraries up. So I have a base.scad. I could make a follow-up to that. And reference base.scad calls some functions or modules within here. Uh, so people have built up libraries making screws and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, so some of that's out there, and I expect this time goes on, and more and more people use this language. It's just going to get a library built out and become more powerful. Uh, so you have that community effort growing behind the shapes. But uh, source control, though, so I showed this, and uh, the undo, uh, you still have to have an undo process. And here's where uh, having the coding background can be helpful. But you can still learn this even if you're not a coder. You could use Git. I'm using the UI of Git uh, because I, that's what I use. But you could totally use uh, a. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not using the UI from Git. I'm using I'm using uh, the the terminal for my UI. But you could totally download some UI for Git as well if it was new to you and intimidating. Uh, but it's not that hard. So you can add files in, and maybe in this case we just want the base. SCAD and oops, we need an add. And I'll commit it uh, first. First initial file. So then now we have have our file committed. I didn't commit the STL. Sometimes I do actually, um, just because I'm might depend on it with something else, or I don't want to have to render it again. Uh, depends about how big it is. All right, so we did that, and now I'm going to 
do something else interesting. Let's make a cylinder. Make a cylinder and do let's pop this up to tens so we can work with whole numbers. So we're gonna make it a little bigger. And then I'm gonna have my cylinder. Since I don't have my equal sign, I have to change my key bindings. I won't be able to center it, so my normal technique won't be apply. Um, so I'll just make a silly example. So I have H's height, so I know I'm tens, so let's do 15 so we know it's bigger and then I have a radius where just one radius two. you can actually make a cone which is kinda cool uh, so I will just not make a cone I'll stick with the cylinder and if it's a 5 or a 10 5 would be the whole size let's do a little smaller so I'll say 4 that'll make an interesting looking hole and so now it's gonna add them together by default and it did so apparently it the implication there is just one of the radiuses, not two. Uh, if I done center equals true, it would have picked it up. I can probably do R and just tell it that's what I want, though. Oh, wait, no equal sign. All right, we're just going to go go with the two two radius sizes. There we go. That's what I was envisioning. So you have that by default adds together. I am going to commit that because that looks like something interesting. So status, and then you can see the modified. I'll add the base. And then I will diff because I can. And now you get to see it's exactly what happened. I changed the uh, parameters for cube and I added the cylinder. So I'm going to commit that. <clears throat> added cylinder to base. All right. So we've got that saved away. And let's see here. I am going to say that we probably want to cut that instead of adding it. So I'm going to do difference. So now I'll save and instantly it's cut away. It's not exactly perfect because actually it's on the same plane so you would technically need to drop that down. This is why I made the cylinder a little bit bigger than the cube. Uh, because you need to be bigger, otherwise it's kind of weird. It's like so, th it starts here and ends here at the same place. It's like this weird situation, which I think it OpenSky probably just renders it. Let me see. OpenSky did render it correctly um, because it's it it technically isn't there. So I guess I don't need to do the translate down in this case, but oftentimes I will just for ease of ease of use. It kind of makes life easier. Uh, so anyways, I made that and let's commit that. I'm doing micro commits here because I want to show a fun get feature. Uh, as I will add base and then commit um, subtracted alright so we've got that committed and let's see here um, these parameters aren't being used you could uh, you could start using them. Oh. And then this gets into another reason why I like OpenSCAD over FreeCAD. When I did this now, that relationship between that and the cylinder. Uh, doesn't get a or normally it's like one object you change that object and then the other one is still doing whatever it's doing so hence like my Raspberry Pi I decide I want the box bigger in some way shape or form uh, if there's a mathematical relationship that can be defined so an example I just made the cube bigger so now look at that the, the cylinder is not doing its job uh, so in this case I just know that I always want the cylinder bigger than the cube and so I can actually to find a mathematical relationship now say well the cylinder is 15 high so I just always want to be higher than that cube so now magically it's always going to be higher than that cube and so that's one of the things I really appreciate about OpenSCAD is you can do the variables and you can find the relationships you can't always for everything sometimes I'm just hard coding numbers too um, but uh, that's that's definitely a, a pro there all right so 
going to commit that. And then we will have, uh, what do we do? Parameterize a cube cylinder and base. All right. So now we have a get log of events history. We can jump back in time for fun. Let's go here. Oh, look at that right away. And then you come in here and you can see where we are at at that point in time. All right, come back to main. Oh, we don't have main. Is it master? It's master. All right, so we're back to there, and uh, so that's gives you a good. A good way to jump around in history, see what's happening, you, things don't get corrupted, and then you have get log, you have all those features of uh, uh, the ability to see history, see changes, and then go back. I don't too often have to go back, uh, but it's there. And I especially like to save my work when I'm done working on something, uh, and so that's super helpful. So another thing about OpenSCAD that I really like is on Thingiverse you can do the parameterized uh, models with them and so you can set up parameters uh, and have it in such a way that the customizer, so if you have a screw for example, you can give it the size and what it is and then you're able to let other people modify it to be what they need it to be. So you write the code, you define the relationships between the objects and then give them parameters and they can tweak the parameters and build out what they want. So that's a new, neat re, neat uh, use of OpenSCAD too. Uh, and I have used OpenSCAD even for importing STLs, modifying things on them. Uh, that glue, that difference, that the union and difference, those two core fundamental concepts uh, give you a lot of power. As you can import an STL for fun, we could even import that one. Uh, so let's do AI so I get the syntax right. Uh, how do I import an SDL using the import command? So you can give it file name and import. All right. So you could bring in another file, and so I made that SDL file kind of at the beginning of the video here, so it should look quite different than the existing one. Look at that. There it is down there. Uh, so it brought that right in. You could translate that, move it up, down, rotate, whatever, scale it, uh, and then you can glue it on. And when you render it, uh, you end up with a piece of your model that you, when you export, export as an STL, it will look just the same as anything else. Uh, so this is nice too for things off of Thingiverse when people don't have, uh, maybe they don't have the original file or whatever, I can still just import it in as an STL and start working with it and you have to guess the numbers sometimes, I'll uh, uh, center it up uh, quite often. I would use translates here, center it up, and then I could use relative uh, that center and then relative uh, measurements, and then that helps out with that a lot. So we talked about the functions, reusable functions, the libraries, uh, source control, the layers. We just don't have the layer issue. Uh, I think the thing that frustrated me at that with uh, FreeCAD is if I put effort into building something and then you're going to corrupt it and I have to start over, I just wasted a lot of time and I hate redoing work. So that's why I use Git, because if I make a mistake, I mess it up. If I've got it saved and even if I push it out to a repository, now I've kind of got double insurance. I've just got the history of what I've done. I'm not redoing work. Uh, it's always horrible to redo work and you never do the same way twice and you wish you remembered what you did before. Uh, so this is the best way I found to save my work and to be pretty speedy with making uh, simple objects. I don't make super complex stuff, but I do modifications and uh, just making a few things here and there that I need. And this is really great for this, uh, that kind of work. And I love the community aspect. You could build out uh, a pretty complex system, I think, with a Git repository and code. Uh, and uh, you, you could do a lot in that way. You can even test out shapes by importing SDLs, uh, I could see how you could build out unit tests with this if someone hasn't already done that. So I think it has potential and uh, it might look old, but it definitely is a very 
powerful programming and can do a lot.